The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Cyprian's Episcopal Church in Hampton, Virginia. I am the Reverend Dr. Ronald Ramsey, Rector of St. Cyprian's Church and Dean of Convocation 5 in the Diocese of Southern Virginia. Nunate Prayer begins on page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer or on page 2 of your service bulletin. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm 19. Let us read the psalm in unison. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalm 67. Let us say this psalm together. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Psalm 124, let us say the psalm in unison. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, if the Lord had not been on our side, when enemies rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. Then would the raging waters have gone right over us. Blessed be the Lord. He has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowl. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Thanks be to God.
for in hope were we saved. Romans 8, verse 24. On 14 separate occasions in the letter to the Romans, Paul refers to the word hope. Throughout the Bible, the word hope appears repeatedly. For this, we must be especially grateful. Consider for a moment how the Bible would read without the word hope. It would be much different from the Bible we know. Consider for a moment a world where the word hope did not exist and could not be found in any language. Consider for a moment the state of a world where there was no hope. It occurred to me that if there were such a Bible, if there were such a void in our languages, if there were such a world, this state of affairs could not, would not last for very long. For our mere survival, if nothing else, we would be forced to create a concept an idea, a word that we would term hope. The history of humanity clearly demonstrates that when hope dies, people die, communities die, churches die, businesses die, nations die. Hope may not prevent the death of some things, but it will surely determine whether or not they will ever be resurrected. In his book, A Theology of Hope, Jürgen Moltmann wrote, everywhere in the New Testament, the Christian hope is directed towards what is not yet visible. Christian hope is therefore resurrection hope. St. Paul says we are saved by hope. In Romans chapter 8 verses 18 through 25, the apostle uses the splendid colors of the gospel to paint an awe-inspiring work of art. He says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. This is a very confident, if not a very bold statement. Perhaps it is both. According to this apostle, whatever our suffering, whatever our trials, whatever our pain, Whatever our struggles, they cannot compare with the glory that we shall know. There will be no even exchange. We will not be able to say that we have paid our dues and therefore this glory is our just reward. No. The suffering of this present time will not compare with the glory to be revealed. For me, this glory is in our future on this earth and in our future in the larger life beyond the stars. It seems to me that Paul was well suited and eminently qualified to make this statement. He was qualified to make this statement. According to his own testimony, it is clear that he knew something about suffering. In Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, he says, Five times I have received from my enemies forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea. 
on frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger from the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. And besides other things, I am under daily pressure because of my anxiety for all the churches. In spite of all that he had endured and was in fact still suffering, Paul could in faith and with confidence say, the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. This affirmation was not conceived to understate the reality of suffering. It was not intended to dismiss the pain of human suffering but rather to put human suffering into proper perspective. This perspective offers us the facts of life with hope as a concluding thought. Yes, suffering is real. Life is not always fair. We don't always get what we want out of life. We must play the hand that we've been dealt. And yes, things often go wrong. Nevertheless, God is faithful. God will stand beside us through days of devastation and nights of numbness and hours haunted by hindsight God has promised never to leave us alone. Henry Ward Beecher so eloquently preached, God washes our eyes by tears until they can behold the invisible land where tears shall be no more. God is with us. God cares. God will deliver us. God will provide. God will give us strength. God will see us through. God will guide our feet. God will make our pathway clear. God will grant us safe passage into the larger life. A larger life here on this earth and a larger life beyond the stars. Amen. <clears throat>
may I offer your own prayers and intercessions at this time. We pray for the care of children. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up, that we may teach them to love forever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for teenagers. God our Father, you see your children maturing in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you, and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for those who live alone. Almighty God, whose son have nowhere to lay his head, grant that those who live alone may not be lonely in their solitude, but that following in his steps, they may find fulfillment in loving you and their neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. That concludes our service for today. I do hope that this service has been a blessing for you. If this service has been meaningful, please like this video and share it with your friends. Our regular Sunday morning worship service will be live streamed on our YouTube channel this Sunday at 10 a.m. We are also meeting in person for in-person worship. And so I do encourage you to welcome and invite family members, friends, neighbors, and co-workers to join us for our in-person worship service or for our live streaming service on our YouTube channel. Until next week, may God keep you safe and healthy. And may our Lord bless you with his eternal grace and heavenly power. Amen and amen.